Ready to go. <laughs> so, this is Charlie, and what makes him special enough for me to make a video about him is the fact that he built this weird turbine without blades, which is super weird, because turbines tend to have blades. But anyway, before we talk about him, let's talk a little bit about turbines. This video was brought to you by Onshape. This is a hero's turbine. Named after the first man to describe it in the first century AD, it's probably the first steam turbine ever built. And because of that, it operates on a very simple concept. Inside the structure you insert water, that will be warmed up by the external flame. Once that water turns into steam, it has no other option but to escape through the tiny nozzles placed in the arms, arranged tangentially to the center of rotation. These arms act as micro-rockets that propel the entire device around itself. <sighs> yeah, this turbine is not a great way of producing power, but it's a great way of demonstrating how reaction turbines work. Tiny rockets propelling stuff around itself. I should probably put that on a t-shirt. You heard it here first, don't forget to subscribe. Reaction turbines are widely used as steam turbines nowadays, but they have a different design from the one built 2000 years ago, and this design was conceived by Sir Charles Algernon Parsons. The Parsons turbine uses moving blades that act as our tiny rockets, and stationary blades that redirect the steam or gas into a new set of moving blades. The idea is to smoothly transfer the speed of the steam into the turbine over several stages, thus getting as much energy as possible. Not all turbines are smooth though or have many stages. For example, impulse turbines. Impulse turbines use a different concept that was developed by Gustave de Laval, the man that invented the de Laval nozzle, used in rockets to go to space. He didn't have rockets in mind when he invented it, he wanted to use the nozzle to spray bladed turbines with as much speed as possible. Here the concept is simple, you just smash a fluid against the blade or bucket to push it forward. By redirecting the fluid direction, you transfer part of its momentum into the turbine. It comes in quick, it leaves a little slower. Reaction turbines and impulse turbines make up about 99% of all the turbines used in the world, but there's an odd one out, one that uses a completely different concept. In 1913, one of the most influential inventors of the 20th century came up with this weird design for a turbine that has no blades. This design has been confusing everyone ever since. The inventor was Nikola Tesla, and the turbine was the Tesla turbine. What makes this turbine so confusing is the fact that it doesn't have blades. It's just a stack of discs. What makes you wonder, how does this work? Well, this turbine works using the stickiness of fluids. And when I say fluids, I mean anything that flows, including air. For example, look at the cylinder. It can freely rotate around this bearing. If I drop some sticky honey on its surface, the honey sticks to the surface and makes it rotate. That's it, basically. That's the concept behind the turbine. Wait a second. Hair is not sticky, is it? Well, it actually is. Not as sticky as honey, but it is sticky. Have you ever seen that trick in which you rotate a tomato using compressed air? The reason the tomato spins is because the air sticks itself to the tomato and imparts some of its movement into the tomato. I know what you're thinking. The tomato has irregularities, and those irregularities act as blades, which make the tomato into a very crappy impulse turbine. Well then, if that is true, can you explain how I'm able to replicate the trick with this very smooth and spherical ping-pong ball? Hmm, Mr. Smarty Pants? Yeah, it's stickiness. Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. Please don't subscribe. Please. Sponsor time. Onshape. Sounds like a fitness app, right? But it's not. It's a 3D modeling platform used to make 3D models that can later be used to build track bikes or even our working robots. Yep, these companies are using Onshape. And I'm using it as well. Because I've been working with CAD softwares for about 13 years. I know, it doesn't seem like it. And Onshape is the first one I can use anywhere I want. Because it's not really a software. It works like Google Docs. You can use it on a browser. Which means it's also very easy to share files. Whether you're an engineer at work and you want to evaluate a new tool for your company, or you just need a CAD system for your at-home projects, you can sign up for a free version of Onshape and start designing in a few minutes at onshape.pro. By clicking the link in the description, you're not just getting a great tool for your projects, but also you're helping this channel. And to that I have to say... I'm in my mom's car. Broom, broom. Back to the video. Imagine you want to use this stickiness concept to make a turbine. How do you design it? Well, maybe you start by the cylinder, like we did for the honey. 
Well, the cylinder would work, but you want to make it as efficient as possible. So instead of going like this, you go like this. A bunch of very thin discs very closely spaced to increase the surface area. And maybe you put the discs inside a cylindrical casing and inject the high-speed fluid tangentially so it naturally spirals towards the center. As the fluid flows around the casing, it transmits its speed to the turbine in the smoothest way possible, without turbulence or losses, which means this turbine can in theory reach insanely high levels of efficiency. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? But then again, we don't see the Tesla turbine anywhere nowadays. And the reason for that is because the Tesla turbine has a lot of speed, but no torque at all. Or at least that's what most people think. I found one that thinks the exact opposite. Tesla turbine gets great torque, especially at low RPMs. That's when it gets the most torque. Really? Yes. The, the torque is proportional to the difference in the fluid speed and the, the disc speed. So the, when the disc is the slowest, the fluid speed is moving the fastest relative to the disc. Torque is the most. Like, why is the Tesla turbine better th than the current turbine? Ease of manufacturing and robust robustability, if you will. It's because no regular turbines can handle wet steam or particulates in it. They'll, over time, you'll just erode the blades down. Because of the design of the turbine, there's no there's no mechanical things for the turbine or the fluid to smash into, and it's all actually through electronic adhesion or sticky. As you as you said, you use you can use a lower grade steam with it, which means you don't have to. You can use geothermal straight out of the pipe from the ground. Yeah. You can the salt, the minerals, the rocks. Nothing. They're not going to hurt it. The one that you have here, how much power can you get out of it? Like right, electrical power. Right now, I have. I, uh, the dyno test with compressed air that did 40, only it was at 40 PSI at the nozzle did... 40 PSI? Only 40 PSI at the nozzle was, PSI at the nozzle was 4,250 watts. I know Charlie seems like your average Nikola Tesla fanboy, but he's not. He's a physicist that saw the potential on this technology and decided to make it a reality. Got the gong effect. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, th th those are some pretty big discs. Oh yeah. What where are they made of? Like some special material like stainless steel or something like that? No, cheap old aluminum. Really? You, yeah, I'll show you one of these discs. Yeah, they can take it. Absolutely. Well, why does it have like little dimp dimples on it? Like to simplify the entire manufacture of the whole thing, instead of putting rivets in here, you just you stamp the discs all in one go and the, the spacers are stamped into the disc. Oh, so the dimples are the spacers. They are. And this oh. way, none of the discs are actually rigidly joined to each other. So they they can all expand and contract at whatever they need for whatever thermal range they, because sometimes- you, you get more flexibility out of them. Yeah, everything. How, how many discs do you have in there? There's 75 of these discs. In 75? There. 75 of them. And then you, you're using like, I, I noticed There's... you're using like BLDC motors as generators? Yes. Those, that's, Two those, of them? Those are straight out of my RC car. Really? <laughs> this is straight onto my RC car. And how, how much power again do you get out of those? Uh, each, they should be able to do 1500 watts each at 12 volts and 300 or 3000 watts at 24 volts. That would be like peak. Uh, do you think we can give it a, a little test with compressor? Uh, yeah, but I have to get my compressor started. Okay, let's just pause for a second and appreciate the fact that this Tesla turbine is putting out 1200 watts of power because each one of those lights consumes 600 watts and this is just with 25 psi of compressed air. Imagine if you use steam. The only thing I have to say to this is, I want that. And I got that. Charlie built me one. That is 285 millimeters squared going in. That works. When are you guys convert into metric? It's just shameful. I, like I said, all the physics I know is in SI units, but all the, all the like realistic sizes are in standard American units. Sure, you want me to speed this up? Yeah, you can speed it up.
can see through it. Can I? Can you? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Ready? So Charlie actually has a company called Test Your Energy, where he sells these Tesla turbine generators to anyone that wants to buy one. So if you're interested, you can find a link in the description. Also, he's giving away a Tesla turbine in this video. We started a company, uh, Test Your Energy, um, because it's our goal to bring this to, to everyone. The full system itself is not like very big. No, it fits all on that stainless steel table over there that we've been So you can at. just put it on your garage. Yeah, it's, it's pretty compact. Uh, so it's a micro steam power plant. So if the grid goes down or just, you know, uh, a blackout, you're, you're covered. On his deathbed, Nikola Tesla actually said that the Tesla turbine is his favorite invention. Which says a lot, because this man had over 200 inventions to his name. This is how new technologies are brought to market, with makers tinkering in their garages. I truly believe that makers should help each other. And that's the reason why I give away 3D printers on my videos. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer. And the winner was Dorps. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will win a brand new 3D printer. Well, um, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!